Hi everyone, welcome to your assembly on World Book Day 2021. My name is Matandan, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm an English teacher. So, for obvious reasons, we cannot celebrate World Book Day in school, we've just missed it. However, that is not going to stop us from talking about all things books. So I can hear you say, what's on? We're going to have a look at our school council's favourite books. We've got some comments from your teachers and other staff about books that changed our lives. We've got a virtual library. We've got a key stage three book cover competition with prizes to be won. And there are some other activities that you can complete if you wish. So what is World Book Day? I'm sure we've all heard of it before, but what actually is it? So World Book Day is a charity on a mission to help change children's lives by making reading together and reading for pleasure a habit for life. Reading for pleasure is the single biggest indicator for success in life, more than family circumstances, educational background or income. So sharing stories together for just 10 minutes a day will encourage a love of reading and it's fun for everyone. You can read together anywhere and everywhere from breakfast to bedtime, in the park, on the train, on the sofa, on a plane, reading and sharing stories can happen anywhere at any time. So to that end, I asked the school council if they could share with me their favourite books and perhaps you could take some inspiration from them. Perhaps you might like the sound of one of these books and decide that this is the book that's going to get you into reading. So Gracie May chose the book The Truth About the Harry Hubert Affair. She said, my favourite book is The Truth About the Harry Hubert Affair because it is different to books I've read before. It gripped you from the first sentence and it's impossible to put down. Harry said, my favourite book is The Highland Falcon Thief by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman. I'd recommend this book because it's very interesting and it's a mystery with lots of surprises in each chapter. And Izzy said, my favourite book is Aragon. It's a fantasy novel about a boy and his dragon. This is my favourite book because it's always thrilling and has moments which leave you in awe. Annabelle said, my favourite book series is World Walker. I love this trilogy because it has so many different genres in it. Humour, romance, fantasy and many more. Isabella said, my favourite book series are the series of books by Christopher Paolini called The Inheritance. I love these books because they are about dragons, magic, and sometimes a bit of fighting. Liliana said, my favorite book series is the Missing series. I love these three books because they are a thriller series and they make you feel every emotion possible. The first book is Girl Missing and it's a must read. Katie said, one of my favorite books is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because there is a huge plot twist, which is interesting, and the characters are well-developed. Zoe said, currently, my favorite book is The Twilight Saga. It is so addictive and makes your heart race when necessary. And Erin said, each book in the series of Rivers of London deals with a different theme and setting, but there is a phenomenal overarching story throughout. It has a very ter Terry Pratchett style humour to it. So they are some absolutely amazing books that you might now feel inspired to go and pick up. But I didn't just want the school councils to contribute. I've asked staff at IS Brecklin to share which books changed their lives or which are their favourite books at the moment that I'm going to share with you. And before we do that, I would just like to share with you some inspirational reading quotes. Now, if I teach you, you might have heard the first quote before. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. I think that's a really good one to think about. Reading is dreaming with eyes wide open. And the more you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places that you'll go. And I think it's really important to think of those things. 
So let's see what your teachers recommended. So Miss Pitt has chosen The White Queen. She said, this genre changed my life as I love reading, but I also love history. And with historical fiction, I can merge the two together in harmony. I chose The White Queen as this series of books really opened up my interest in the Plantagenet era and the Wars of the Roses, which I didn't study at university. So this was a whole new world or conspiracy, murder and intrigue for me to delve into. And Ms. Saunders said, reasons why this book is important to me are in the following quotations. You cannot buy the revolution. You cannot make the revolution. You can only be the revolution. It is in your spirit or it is nowhere. And change is freedom. Change is life. There's a point around the age of 20 when you have to choose whether to be like everybody else the rest of your life or to make a virtue of your peculiarities. There's some great quotes there, thank you. So Mrs. Carly Teach said, I could not choose only one favorite book for World Book Day. I had to pick two. Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz were my favorite childhood books. I love the way that the writers transport you to surreal worlds and with the leading role being a curious and courageous young female setting out on an adventure. With a cowardly lion, ruby slippers, mad hatter's tea parties, magic spells and potions, what's not to love? Mrs. Bassett has said my favourite books growing up were The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, as I couldn't wait to find out what adventures would happen next. For anyone that hasn't read them, I would definitely recommend. I was lucky enough recently to find all seven books in one and can't wait to get started again. I hope you enjoy that, Mrs. Bassett. Miss Ambrose said, Noughts and Crosses was a book I read when I was 13 and I fell in love. The author put society, politics, history and prejudices under a microscope through looking at the world in this alternative universe. It is such a unique story and makes you really think about the world you are currently living in and the history that has been. Now, I think that's an excellent choice, Miss Ambrose. So excellent, in fact, that year eight and nine will be studying this book later on in the year. So if you're in year eight or nine and you like the sound of that, hold fire because you're going to do it in English. And Mrs. Oslavio has said, I'm not usually a fan of love stories, but this is exceptional. Imagine being in love with someone who travels in time but has no control over it. Is this love meant to be? Great book. And then you've got my choice. To Kill a Mockingbird is a book that I think about often. The characterization of the protagonist, Scout, is so developed that she will stay with me for a long time. The life lessons we learn from her father, Atticus, are timeless. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it, something we should all consider. And Mrs. Ball said, one of my favourite books growing up was Mortal Engines by Philip Reeve. This book stands out to me because it had a strong female lead character who was a fighter and survivor. I also loved the fantasy world that was created within the book, set way in the future, where cities are on wheels and operate as machines. An amazing idea. And Mr Nelson has chosen The Hobbit. He said, The Hobbit has been my favourite for as long as I can remember. I just love the Lord of the Rings stories. Always have. Mrs Taylor chose Little Women. She said, this book is like a reassuring hug, which is what everyone probably needs right now. My granny gave me this copy and like her, the book is about fearlessness, family and finding your own way in the world. Mrs. Wright, here is a picture of me at 13 with my favourite book, which I discovered at this age. I love this book because it is funny, romantic, and made me want to travel. It also was made into an award-winning film, and that book is called A Room with a View. Mrs. Hill, Mrs. Hill chose War Horse. War Horse is one of my favourite books, 
not just because it's a moving tale of courage, friendship and survival, but also because the story is told from the horse's point of view. And I found that really unusual and intriguing. It tells the story of the many horses who suffered in World War I and gives us a new perspective on the horridness of war without taking sides. Mr. Gedge, Mr. Gedge has said, no logo opened my eyes to the world and for the first time made me fully aware of how my personal decisions might affect people far removed from me and my life. It taught me about sweatshops, modern slavery, advertising, and how to think carefully about the consequences of every pound I spend. Mr. Perrier says, I've always enjoyed spy and crime books. I remember enjoying watching a television series based on John Lee Carey's Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy when I was at school. He is such a good writer, using well-researched reality, but subtle humour too. I got given this book for Christmas, and that book is called Agent Running in the Field. Mrs Leach said, Mr Meadows, Muddles by Enid Blyton gave me my love for reading when I was seven years old. Before I read these books, I just read words which didn't really mean anything to me. But these books with little pictures allowed me to create the story in my head and the reason for reading then made sense. And Miss Keel has said, as the tagline perfectly sums up, it shows how sport can change our lives. There are some excellent examples of strong females in both mind and body who have accomplished so much, often against the odds, and proved what women can do. Well worth a read. Ms Myers Hall said, I couldn't pick this year. Usually it's the Hound of the Baskervilles, but last year I managed to find the Doctor Sin series. So now I can't decide. Both have adventure and mystery in them, and both are historical fiction set in wild and remote places, either involving the sea or the moors, both of which I love. Mr Smith chose Things Fall Apart. He says Things Fall Apart is simple, honest, unbiased, and has the most powerful ending of any book I have ever read. In today's world of clashing cultures, this is a historical dilemma from which we all could learn. And Mr. Wynn said, at present, I'm plowing my way through a series of Lee Child's books. I can identify a number of similarities between myself and Jack Reacher. Miss Evans has said, aside from the cover, this book would appear to be a biology textbook. However, it is in fact a cleverly crafted journey through the human body. It is full of fascinating facts and extraordinary stories. It has really reopened my eyes to how complicated us human beings are. Mrs. Berry said, Small Island by Andrea Levy depicts post Second World War London and the struggle of those who fought heroically in the war to find a place in a society which is now unwilling to accept them. There are three interconnecting stories with a satisfying twist at the end, combining them, which makes me cry every time I read it. Mr. Gower said, one of my favorite books is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagiara. This novel follows the lives of four friends in New York from their college years and into middle age. I find the story of each character incredibly moving. And although I read it several years ago, I still think about it often. It's remarkable. So thank you to all, all teachers that have shared with us their favorite books. Perhaps you feel a little bit inspired now. Perhaps there's a type of book that you've just heard about that you might not have considered before. So another thing available to you for World Book Day is our virtual library. So welcome in. So in our virtual library, we have some books and you can click on the front cover of them and it will take you to a PDF version of the book where you can read it. Now, these are just some books. Um, there are others that if you type into Google PDF version, they might come up. So it's well worth a try. And here are just some recently released book titles that you might be interested in reading. We've got Windrush Child, Concrete Rose, The Black Flamingo, 
one of us is next, the colours that blind, brown baby, a memoir of race, family and home. So perhaps you want to research them, see if they take your fancy. So we do have book tokens for you as well. When you are back in school, I will give them to your mentors to distribute out to you. And don't worry because they are valid until the 28th of March. And you can take them into your local bookstore or retailer and um, you can use them in there. So that will be uh, fabulous. I really hope you utilize those. Okay, so we have a Key Stage 3 book cover competition. So this is open to year seven, eight and nine. So it is to recreate a book cover. So what is the task? Get creative at home and recreate the book cover of your favorite novel. You need to make it look as real as possible and you can be creative as you like. You need to take a picture and send it into my email address, which is on the screen now. And the deadline is Wednesday, the 3rd of March at 3 p.m. And the winner will be contacted on World Book Day, which is this Thursday, and um, so that they will find out. So there's first, second and third winners announced on Thursday, the 4th of March, and there are prizes to be won. So here are just some examples of um, people that have done it before. Now here's only three, but if you put it into Google, there's, um, there's loads of ideas. So get as creative as you can. And I really look forward to seeing them. So you can head over to worldbookday.com where there is so many activities that you could get included in. And if there's anything that you do and you particularly want to show us, please send it in and that will be fantastic. So the last thing to say is have a happy World Book Day from all of us here at IES Breckland. And thank you again to everybody that contributed. I hope that you're feeling a little bit more inspired to pick up that book.